What's good everyone, my name's Zayas, and today I'm here to review Hoseki no Kuni, aka Land of the Lustrous. Hoseki started in 2012 and is currently ongoing with 95 chapters, and it's an action, drama, fantasy, sign-in manga. The series has been on hiatus for over a year, but if Ichikawa wants to catch up to Takashi, she's got some pretty serious work to put in. Ichikawa Haruko did write two short stories before Hoseki no Kuni, and now going back to read them, I kind of view them as the prototype for Hoseki. The long, slender characters, the big, vast, pitch black backgrounds, the bittersweet feeling that some of the character arcs have, they're all still there in the short stories. So if you're a fan of Hoseki, you'll probably want to check these out. Ichikawa did say she was a big fan of a lot of shoujo manga, and it's easy to see the similarities in how the gems are drawn. They look very shoujo-esque. But she also said that she was a big fan of Dragon Ball and used to practice sketching Dragon Ball back before she was a mangaka. And it's sad to say, but I can't really see any of the similarities there. When I first saw Hoseki, I wasn't sure if this manga was for me, because these gems are drawn to be extremely fragile, tiny characters. And me, I like big, raw, rugged characters. And even though I'm still not the biggest fan of a lot of the gems character designs, I'm pretty glad that I picked this series up as it's been extremely enjoyable throughout most of the series. The artwork ends up being the main driver of the series for the first maybe 50-ish chapters. It's an incredibly beautiful series with tons of detailed backgrounds, incredible landscapes of different varieties. Ichikawa has said that she much prefers drawing still objects and inanimate objects as opposed to moving ones, and you can see pretty clearly why she says that. The gems and the plants are drawn extraordinarily well, but some of the action scenes aren't quite as great as the still scenes. Don't get me wrong, the action scenes are still pretty enjoyable, it's just that the movement in the scenes isn't portrayed as clearly as I would like. This manga has some incredibly beautiful scenery, there's tons of trees, mountains, icebergs, just tons of beautiful environments. The backgrounds aren't the only part of the manga that are done well, there's also the characters, which look great. Of course, the gems weren't my favorite, but it's not horrible. But there's other characters like the Master and the Lunarians, characters who are incredibly noble looking and they look super bold. I like the Buddhist themes thrown in here. It was kept to the point where it's enough to make things fresh and interesting, but it wasn't to the point where the themes were overpowering the point of the story. The first section of the manga is pretty great. We're introduced quite quickly to a variety of characters, but it's left open-ended enough to the point where there's a little bit of mystery around the series. Learning about all these gems, their different quirks, their jobs on this planet, what their purpose is, is enough to propel the story forward for about 20 or so chapters. We also get to learn about how these gems are super innocent and pure, and why they're treasured by everyone in the universe. Vos is the main character, and he's introduced as a weak and unreliable character, a pretty common trope in a lot of manga. But this trope is quickly shattered as he begins to lose his limbs and extremities and regain them in the forms of treasures. Another throwback to Buddhism here, where he's going to receive the eight Buddhist treasures, we realize that him powering up and becoming stronger isn't necessarily a good thing. He begins to lose parts of his memory, and even though he becomes stronger, you don't know if it was all worth it in the end. Ichikawa makes a pretty strong statement here in that sometimes people don't really know or understand the implication behind the things that they want. Unfortunately, the next part of the series is my least favorite part. Around the 20 to 50 chapter mark is where I thought things slowed down quite substantially. The artwork is still upheld to a pretty great level, but in terms of the storytelling and the mystery unraveling, there really isn't that much going on here. It's pretty easy to see what Ichikawa wants to do. She's trying to create a feeling of dread, despair, and inevitability to the fact that the gems will be snatched up by the Lunarians, and there's nothing really Fos can do to prevent this. And even though she achieves her goal, she sacrifices a lot in terms of pacing and in general enjoyment of this series. It feels like a total slog to get through these 30 chapters. The amnesia does nothing to really help this. The pacing is already so slow of the story and now Fos has to relearn everything that he already knows for a second time. Once you get past this though, you get to the best part of the series when the mystery begins to unravel and the series begins to progress a lot faster. 
there are some pretty huge spoilers ahead, so I'll just put in a spoiler warning here. If you don't want to listen to any spoilers, then you shouldn't. Fos's transformation is my favorite part of this series. It's a pretty grotesque transformation into something that's like similar to a Frankenstein. I thought it was incredibly terrifying. It was a little bit sad, but it was also incredible to see how much he had changed throughout the course of the series. And the entire thing is left a little ambiguous, which I also appreciated. It's not like Fos is the bad guy despite doing some pretty horrible deeds. And it's not like the master was really manipulating her or anything like that. The characters just did what they felt like they should have done. The incorporation of the post-apocalyptic setting really fit super well. The series does feel so vast and empty. It does feel like everybody has just disappeared. I wouldn't say Ichikawa is a master of expressions, but towards the end of the series, the expressions done on the master and Fos I really enjoyed. The master had this blank sort of expression because when the gems aren't under the influence of his love juice or whatever you'd like to call it, uh, they are not viewing him as a gentle and loving person. And on the opposite side, Fos ended up looking a lot more twisted and distorted near the end of the series. The other gem side stories were also interesting, but the star of the show is Fos. You want to see what's going to happen to this gem who was formerly pure and innocent and got transformed into this monstrosity. And there's still two more <laughs> treasures to go, so it's likely somehow going to get worse. The still shots towards the end of the series are also really great. This shot of Fos descending down upon the world like some sort of evil villain just looked incredible. The showdown between the gems in general was just great. It's not because of the action itself, it's more because of the implication of the fight between these gems. Uh, the one thing that I would say I was a bit torn on was the master talking about how the most human emotion is vengeance and Fos is a human because he is vengeful. Well, I can understand that Fos is the most human-like in the series as most of the other gems are pretty stationary, they don't really change throughout the series whereas Fos has grown a lot throughout the series. I wouldn't necessarily say that it's because he's vengeful. I think that might be just a little bit edgy. Enma is another character which is drawn incredibly well, maybe my favorite design in the series, and his plotting and planning and his backstory makes you pretty curious as to what's gonna happen next with him. Oh, and in the background, Adamant's brother is still lying in wait, so there's a lot of things to look forward to in the series that are still unsolved. Even if you look at the backgrounds in the series, a lot of them are light and empty in the first half, but in the second half, you'll see a lot more dark and filled backgrounds. It's a pretty solid series with a lot of potential. The 20 to 50 chapter slog kind of threw me off at the beginning, but I think there's still a lot of good stuff in here and a lot of good stuff to come. So I'm feeling a strong seven to a light eight. Thank you everyone. Like the video, subscribe, leave a comment on what you thought on the series or any recommendations. Thank you and I'll see you in the next one.